Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 22 of Chess Basics, things every chess player ought to know. Uh, we're continuing our look this episode at uh, rook and pawn endings. And last time we looked at the uh, Lucena position, which is a win for white. Uh, this time we're going to look at the Philidor position, which is a way for black to draw. And uh, of course I'm assuming that white is the one with the extra pawn, so white's trying to win and black is trying to draw. And uh, this position is a position studied by Philidor in 1777, so it bears his name. And actually this is a critical position, which is that uh, if it's white's turn to move, um, then white can win the game. Whereas if it's black's turn to move, then black can draw. So first of all, let's, let's show the, the winning try by white. Um, King e6 is the only uh, move that, that wins in this position. And this move does one, two things. It uh, puts the king in front of the pawn, which you know from last uh, episode is uh, the right thing to do in general. And uh, it secondly threatens to mate the black king with the move rook a8 check. It's going to be a checkmate. So the king has to run. And um, here, let's, let's introduce a little bit of terminology. When you have a rook and pawn ending with just a single pawn, there's two sides to the pawn. Uh, this side over here is called the long side, and this side is called the short side just because there's more squares on the long side and fewer squares on the short side. So there's a general rule that uh, you want your rooks on the long side so they can operate here at a maximum checking distance, cause a maximum amount of uh, harassment to your opponent. And uh, your king, particularly if you're defending, you want your king on the short side. Uh, there's fewer squares over here and sometimes there's some stalemating chances. So anyway, uh, black being forced to move uh, runs to the short side. And uh, white delivers this check and forces the king away. And you can see this is, uh, it's not quite the position we had last week, but it's almost a winning position already. Uh, the king has been forced out from in front of the pawn. The white king is in front, and the only step uh, needed to get the identical position to last week is to uh, cut the king off somehow. But you can see the king is effectively cut off because the, the rook controls all these squares and the white king controls these squares. So the black king can't get any closer to the pawn. Anyway, it's uh, black's move here. No, it's check. It's white's move here. So he just moves his king forward, uh, making space for the pawn. Black attacks the pawn. You go forward. And uh, if black tries to cut the king off, trying to keep him imprisoned in the box, then he can continue to go forward like this. And then you can just uh, move your rook back. And now if the... Uh, White king goes towards the pawn. It's too late already. Um, check. Drive the king away. Or you can just step over here. And notice this uh, rook can't come here to check you, so you're going to uh, queen that pawn. So that's no good. Um, the other thing he might try is uh, staying behind the pawn and moving the king, or just moving the rook back and forth. So in this position, just going back. You can go to the side. Check. And you saw this inchworm technique uh, last week. Just move the pawn forward. And uh, the king comes up and attacks the pawn. Then you can check the king away once again. So the king has to go. I'll say he goes here. He could also go here. Doesn't, doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, but if he goes there, you have this uh, shelter where you can escape uh, from in front of the pawn and uh, make a queen if he goes the other way. After the check, he could go this way, and uh, you can just come out the other side. And once again, uh, if he checks you, you block with the rook, and this is going to become a queen. So there's just no way to uh, stop the pawn anymore after the move king e6. So let's go all the way back to the beginning, and uh, let's look at the drawing technique. And we're going to just make it black's move. So everything is identical, it's just black's turn to move. And um, the idea of the defense is to get your rook onto the third rank. So black wants his rook to be on this row somewhere. So he moves his rook to the square here, threatening to come down to um, uh, b6. Now if the king steps in front, king e6, you bring your rook here, check, and uh, he's blocked by your king, so he has to go back. And you can just uh, sit here with the rook on the third row. 
Um, and uh, he doesn't have a lot he can do. He can check your king. You just stay in front of the pawn. The main thing is he can't drive your king away anymore. And of course, you're not trying to win. So if he wants to repeat moves, you're happy with that. That's a draw. So um, what else can he try? He can't move the king forward. So eventually, he's going to give up and move the pawn forward. And uh, here is the critical point, is that uh, when this pawn moves forward to the third rank, uh, you drop your book rook back. Now again, if he checks you, you just stay in front, just back and forth. So he's going to try and bring his king forward to uh, uh, cause trouble and uh, promote his pawn. And when he does that, you can just check the king. The king has no shelter. He can't get in front of the pawn because your king is guarding all of these squares. And uh, so he can step to the side, but he can't escape your checks. And of course, if he, if he goes back to harass your rook, um, that's really not a problem. Um, turns out he's gotten too far away from the pawn, and now he's going to lose the pawn, and this is just going to be a straight draw. So uh, that's how you do it. And uh, what else can white try here? You see that once the pawn is pushed forward and your rook drops back, let's go all the way back. So if we play forward here, check. And uh, if we ignore that. So we, we know his moves uh, with the rook don't accomplish anything. He's only left with king and pawn moves. Or he could uh, drop the rook back. But uh, moving the king, he can't go forward with the king. And once the pawn has gone forward, then you drop back immediately and start delivering those checks, which he can no longer escape. He can drop his rook back um, to block the check. But of course, that that's... Uh, this is a draw as well, you know, from earlier episodes of Chess Basics. So, uh, so it's totally drawing. So let's go all the way back to uh, this position here. After you play Rook to B4, threatening to come to uh, the third rank. Um, if he pushes his pawn immediately, then again, you just drop back so that you can start delivering these checks from the, from the back. Um, so that doesn't help. King forward doesn't help. He could try king uh, here to stop your rook from coming to the third rank. But then you can just attack the pawn. And um, with a line like this, you're actually going to just trade off that pawn and uh, have a draw that way because of lack of material. So uh, that's not helping either. So... Uh, that's the key idea of the Philidor defense. It is to uh, the Philidor position. Actually, yeah, it's sometimes called the Philidor defense, too. Get your rook to the third rank and just stay there. And it um, doesn't matter what he does. Oh, he just moved, so you stay, you stay on the third rank. If he goes back and forth with his rook, that's okay. If he tries to challenge you, again, you have to be careful that you're getting into a drawn endgame. But this is one of those draws. Your king is in front of the pawn. He has to go here to defend it. You step in front of his king, and uh, once again, you have a draw. So um, that's pretty much it for the Philidor position. I'm going to uh, show an example uh, next episode taken from a real game where... Uh, It'll show some of the complications involved uh, in trying to get to the Philidor position. But, uh, you know, with your king, the thing to remember is keep your king in front of your opponent's pawns and try to get your rook onto the third rank. And uh, that's it for now. Stay tuned for uh, next episode where we'll continue this look at uh, rook and pawn endings. And, um, oh, if you have any comments, uh, leave them in the section below. Bye.